that Vermont's population shows the other end of the scale. Uh, this is the highest rate, 58 percent. Well, Dr. Lisa Cooper is the director of Johns Hopkins Center for Health Equity and the author of a new book, Why Are Health Disparities Everyone's Problem? Uh, she's in Clarksville, Maryland. Um, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the common held view would be that these discrepancies are built around politics, around party politics, in fact. Is it that simple? No, it's much more complex than that. So explain, um, you know, yeah. Sure, yeah. I, I think, you know, we have people of a, a range of age groups, people from different racial and ethnic groups, people with different levels of education who have uh, different kinds of comfort level with the vaccine and with trusting authorities and institutions that are administering the vaccine. So it's not as simple as politics. I think um, there are communities of color that have been treated very poorly for a long time in the United States and as a result have developed mistrust of institutions. We have people who have lower levels of education who don't quite understand how the vaccine was developed or how it works. And then, you know, then you do have some people with particular re re religious backgrounds or political affiliations who might have some concerns around the government and it's uh, coming up with a vaccine quickly and um, the safety of it, uh, whether or not it's being used to trap them in some way. So there's many different groups right. and different beliefs. Well, in which case, what is the role you think that the president of the United States can usefully play here? Because I think you would make the point communication is everything, isn't it? But perhaps communication at a local community leader level may be the best way to avoid this sort of authority problem that goes on. Can Joe Biden make a difference? Well, I think he can. I think he has a very uh, important voice. Um, he is trusted among many people. But I do think it's important for the federal government to work, as you said, with local leaders, with grassroots organizations, with people who are faith community leaders, physicians, nurses, other health professionals, people who are trusted within their own communities and within certain groups in order to get that message across. Lisa, is there an element also where a substantial number of Americans sort of can't quite be bothered now, that the, the crisis feels like it's over? I think that it, there is some element of that. I think people who didn't really believe that it was a real issue in the first place uh, are now relieved uh, that many of the restrictions have been lifted. I think others who feel somewhat invincible feel like they're not particularly at high risk. So I think, and people are just fatigued, you know, with everything. And so I think there's some of that. I think there are some other real issues getting in the way. People have to work. They don't have time to get off work. They may not have transportation to get to where they need to get a vaccine. So there might be some other complicating factors related to access that aren't only related to being hesitant about taking the vaccine. Yeah, the challenge goes on. Um, Dr. Lisa Cooper, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me.